Rashma, do you want to come up with your challenge? So we're just playing now as to how we explore challenges and situations. Obviously this is role play. So you'd like to read out your challenge again, the one you did a minute ago, about your daughter. So this is role play, yes? This is the things they've made up. My daughter is young. Her daughter is young. She always has tough times at school. So she's always having tough times at school. She always cries when she comes home. Mm -hmm. Her cries is like a stone on my chest. She's very lonely. No one loves her. I'm the only person she trusts. I should be her best friend. I can't be happy if she's miserable. She's a piece of my heart. Okay, right. So what's the first thing you would do? Here we've got the clients coming in with this. What could we do? What, what, what might be a first thing to kind of loosen up the model of the world? <laughs> Break with generalizations. Break with generalizations is one. Uh, necessities. But, uh, in I would do what you just said there. Okay. So what I'd do is now I'd say here she is here. She's stuck in second position, yeah? So, and the daughter's a, has got this weight there, which is an indication of first as well. When, is, when, when she's got the weight on her shoulder, on her chest, that's first position. Okay? She's feeling that. When she's over in beside the daughter, she's in second. Both of these positions, she has not got choice. So, and when she said the weight of the stones on her chest, a client would normally either hold their chest or their shoulders would go down. So if you just hold, just hold your chest with one hand, hold the stone. <laughs> okay? All right, and bend your shoulders a bit. So this is when she's in first. When she's in second, the body will change a bit. But what we can do is we'll move the client to third. Okay, so now we're moving to third. So you let go. So now I'd like to see Rashma over there and the daughter. Her daughter. Let's make a name up. What's her daughter's name? Katya. Who? Katya. Well, we won't use that one because there is a person of course called Katya. <laughs> Let's call the person um, Lucy. Is anyone Lucy in it? Anyone called Lucy in this course? So we've got Lucy over here. Okay. So now we've got Lucy. I'd like to see Lucy and Rashma. Russia. Over Russia. 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 Like the country. I know. I've been calling you the wrong name for a long time now. Uh, now I realise that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so now read that again, Rashma. That's a joke. <laughs> Russia. My daughter is young. She's young. So and you see your young daughter over there. And she always had tough times at school. Okay. So as you look at the Russia and Lucy over there, how do you know she's always having tough times? She always comes and crying at home. Okay. Uh, how do you know Lucy's having tough times at school? She doesn't look that good. Okay, so that's the other So She doesn't look that good. How is she looking? She... She has sad expressions. Okay, so how do you know they're sad? Looking down. Okay. Her posture is bending. Okay, all right. So she's got this posture bending down like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the marker. What else you got? She cries when she comes home. She cries? That's obvious. Okay. Uh, her cries is like a stone on my chest. Okay, so there's a stone on her chest over there. Mm -hmm. Let's leave Russia over here. I'd like to see the stone. No, you stay over there. Russia here, yeah? She's got a stone on her chest here. With the stone on Russia's chest, how helpful can she be to Lucy as a mother? Doesn't help. Okay, carry on. Okay. So what's Rasha's intention here? To help and support her daughter. Okay. All right. Get her out of the situation. To get her out of this situation. Carry on. Yeah. So the da your daughter, Lucy's having a tough time, indicated by the way she's carrying her body, and it's like a stone on your chest. Okay. She's very lonely. I'm the only person she trusts. Okay, how do, you know, how do you know? The way she talks about her classmates. Okay. Mobbing her. Okay. Bullying. How else do you know she's your, the, Russia here is the only one she trusts? She said that. Okay, good. So it's good she got this relationship with your daughter. Hmm? Okay. So let's look at Russia over there. I'd like to go in and demonstrate to me now how she's standing when, she, when she's got the stone on her chest. Okay, shake it off. Come out here. And now, 
as you look at Lucy over there, I'd like to demonstrate how Lucy's standing when she comes in from school. How Lucy? Yeah. Go to Lucy. No, in the, over here. Walk into it. How's Lucy, how does Lucy stand? You said she's down. Okay. Yeah, that way she looks. Okay, all right. And now step into Russia over there. Okay, all right. Come here, please. So, what is Lucy learning from her mother? To keep the same posture. Okay. So, what is Russia teaching her daughter? Nothing. Well, maybe she is. <laughs> Just go back in there and stand as Russia. With the stone. Okay. And now shake it off. And now go to Lucy. Okay. Come over here. So, who, what is Russia teaching her daughter? Kind of to maintain sadness. Oh. To maintain the state of sadness in the body. Okay. So, we know here Lucy has something going on at school. She's coming in and expression, expressing certain things, and Russia's got the stone on her chest. Is that useful to Lucy? No. Okay, right. So how could Russia be here where she could be a little bit more resourceful for Russia and to communicate something different to Lucy to help Lucy change the state as well? How could she be standing? What could, be she, do what could she be doing? You could try to put the smiley face. Okay. A little right. smile. Maybe a smiley face. Yep. Okay, and what else? Um, what about her shoulders? Yep. What about her breathing? The posture. Yeah. Okay. Alright. And what else? <laughs> and what, what else? Yeah. How else could she be standing to uh, communicate something different to Lucy? Um have maybe stronger eye contact stronger with eye her. Contact. Okay, and now when you're like this, stand up like this, mm -hmm. where's the stone you're on? Where's the stone? Yeah. That not not here. It's not there? No. Okay, good. No. Come out here. What sort of tones of voice could Russia be using over here? And language to indicate something a little bit more resourceful for Russia and Lucy in this context? More confident voice. How would that sound? Like I'm talking now. Okay, good. So if you used to tell Russia over there to have a more confident voice and a different position in her body, how would you tell it to her? How would I tell her? Yes, yeah, so that's Russia. You're the coach now. Mm -hmm. What would you say to Russia over there? Mm -hmm. I would ask her to maybe explore different uh, language way of expressing okay. herself. Right. And so say it to her over there. See Russia over there. Tell her what to do. You're the coach. Okay. Uh, maybe you can try a different... Um, Ask her different questions okay. so about what's going on in school. Okay, so what happens if she tries? Things changes. Okay, well, tries, or, or, or would you do something? Are you going to try it, or are you going to do? Do, yeah, okay. yeah to do. Okay, so, so say that, so that. What else could you say to... What else could you say to Russia? Um... Look her in the eye. Look her in the eye. And uh, encourage her to go away from those that are mobbing her in school, maybe, and okay. look for others that Good. are So go not. in now into first position and say it. Role play it. Lucy, maybe you can look around in the school and talk to, mm -hmm. to other people. Mm -hmm. Avoid those that are mobbing you. Ignore them for now and find other friends. Maybe. Okay. Good job. Step out. Take a breath. Okay. And that's kind of like what we did. We shifted the perceptual position. We shifted the representational systems. And it's been an exchange of dialogue and challenged the metamodel patterns. Okay. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Good So obviously that is a role play. One second, please, yeah? Yeah, but, but I'll, pick up, I'll pick your question up in a minute, yeah? 
So, obviously that's a role play. But what I want you to do is just start thinking what happens is when someone's stuck in first, if you pull them to third. Yeah? In this case, someone's stuck in first and second, oscillating around, if you pull them to third. If someone's stuck in third, and you put them into first. If they're stuck in the kinesthetic system, if you bring them to third, if you bring them to third, the moment they're in third, the body will change and they'll have access to visuals and auditories. Then you can challenge the meta model patterns from third as well. Does this make sense? Yes. Yeah? So this is just a really cool way of shaking up the model of the world. And I guarantee you, I've done this a lot. If this was a real case, you'd have seen a difference in physiology, you'd have seen a difference in tone, and the client is beginning to access resources. There are many cases where the parents are teaching the children by buying into the pattern. This is not that, um, this situation isn't that disconnected from real world situations where children are coming in from school and say, nobody likes me, everybody's horrible to me, where the parent buys into that pattern. And if the parent's buying into that pattern, they are coaching their child to be a victim. Yeah? And now it will go through generations. Because the child will grow up to a victim, and the minute they come, oh, I'm so come here, let me go to use the stone on my shoulder. And she's not coaching the child to be independently thought, thinking. We can't change the situation at school directly, the only way you can change the situation at school is to give the daughter resources so that when she goes into school, she's creating a different experience. But you will not change it by buying into the sympathy or the victimhood that's presented in this exchange. Does that make sense? Yep. So this is a really good example. Actually, it's not that different to somebody I did coach re quite recently whose child was having a problem at school, but the parent wasn't helping because the parent wasn't teaching the kid independence at all. And in essence, the child was just ending up modeling the mother. Okay, make sense? Making sense? So by changing perceptual position, changing representational systems, and challenging the metamodel pattern shakes the map of the world up enough that the client has already changed and got resources. It's changing the perceptual experience in the map of the world. In NLP, we, don't, we say we don't operate on the real world, you operate on a map of the world. This is a map of the world, and it's defined through perceptual filters. The representational systems are perceptual, are perceptual filters, as the meta model patterns will be perceptual filters, as will the perceptual positions. Good stuff? Well, we haven't done an intervention here, explicitly. So someone was going to say, have you done it, could we a map across or an intervention? You could. But in coaching, before I did an intervention, I want to, what we're doing here is teaching people choice. Because once the client gets aware of this, the chances are this client would be buying into other people's stories in the same way. Maybe her sisters, her brothers, her mothers, or whoever. So you're teaching the client how to experience the world differently and by the very nature be independently minded through their perceptions when they're out there.